What if the secret to living longer isn't in a gym or a pharmacy, but in your backyard? Harvard tracked 108,000 people for eight years. One simple activity is linked to significantly longer lifespans. And the people who do this just 20 minutes a day show measurably better brain health. Section 1. The Problem You spend seven hours a day forcing your brain to focus. Screen time. Meetings. Decision making. Your prefrontal cortex is in constant overdrive. Directed attention fatigue. And it's depleting your cognitive reserve. If you're intelligent, you're more vulnerable to this. Smart people rarely let their executive functions rest. You're either working, reading, or ruminating. Never truly restoring. This isn't laziness. This is neurological burnout. Section 2. The Science The solution? Gardening. Gardening rebuilds your exhausted brain through four neurological mechanisms. First, soft fascination. Psychologists call this attention restoration theory. Your brain needs soft fascination. Activities that capture attention without demanding cognitive effort. When you're pulling weeds, your brain is engaged, but your prefrontal cortex gets to rest. 20 minutes of gardening can feel more restorative than two hours of Netflix. Second, the soil microbiome effect. There's a bacteria in soil called Mycobacterium vacae. When you breathe it in or absorb it through your skin, it may act like a natural mood regulator. University of Bristol studies showed it activates serotonin-producing neurons through your gut-brain axis. Exposure to beneficial soil bacteria appears to reduce neuroinflammation. Your immune system signals shift when you touch Earth. Third, neurogenesis in the hippocampus. Harvard Medical School found that gentle aerobic movement and sensory enrichment triggers BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Think of it as fertilizer for your brain. It promotes growth of new neurons in your hippocampus, your memory center. The nurse's health study showed people with regular exposure to green spaces had 12% lower mortality risk. The effect was strongest in those who actively engaged with nature, like gardening, versus passive walking. Fourth, fine motor skills. Pruning, planting, Weeding require complex hand-eye coordination. This activates your motor cortex and frontal lobe simultaneously. Stanford research suggests fine motor activities build cognitive reserve effectively. Similar neurological benefits to playing an instrument, but more accessible. Charles Darwin designed his garden as a thinking laboratory. He spent four hours daily gardening while solving evolutionary puzzles. Thomas Jefferson called it the greatest service to your mind. They weren't hobbyists. They were using gardening as a cognitive tool. Section 3. The Longevity Connection In Okinawa, Japan, one of the Blue Zones, 80% of centenarians garden daily. In Sardinia, Italy, daily gardening correlates with longer lifespans. While these are observational studies, Science points to three direct biological pathways. First, systemic inflammation reduction. Harvard's Nurses Health Study found regular gardening is associated with lower C-reactive protein. Since chronic inflammation is one of the primary accelerators of aging, managing it is linked to reduced risk of Alzheimer's and heart disease. Second, purpose and the default mode network. Gardening activates your default mode network, the brain's creative wandering mode. But unlike rumination, gardening keeps it productive. Yale research shows healthy default mode network activity correlates with better cognitive aging, your problem solving without the stress cortisol spike. Third, circadian reset. Morning sunlight while gardening helps regulate melatonin production. Your circadian rhythm is your master clock for cellular repair. Winston Churchill used gardening to combat his black dog depression. 
It regulated his sleep when nothing else could. Smart people overthink exercise. Is this optimal? Am I doing it right? Gardening bypasses analysis paralysis. There's no wrong way to dig. Yet three hours weekly can give you cardiovascular benefits comparable to moderate gym activity. Without the mental barrier. Section 4. The Protocol. First, address the perfectionist trap. If you've killed plants before, that's neuro-learning data, not failure. Your brain builds stronger pathways through trial and error. Start messy. The 20-minute protocol. Start with 20 minutes. Three times weekly. Begin with container herbs. Basil. Rosemary. Mint. They give immediate sensory feedback. Smell. Texture. This triggers dopamine release. If possible, garden in the morning. Morning timing helps reset your circadian rhythm. Use both hands intentionally. Plant with one. Smooth soil with the other. After two weeks, add one vegetable. Tomatoes or lettuce. Beginner friendly. High success rates. Practice soft fascination. Let your mind wander while weeding. Don't force focus. This is when your default mode network does its best work. Pick one plant and track its progress. This activates anticipation circuits. You're training your brain to value slow, incremental progress. For maximum benefits, aim for 20 to 30 minutes daily. Mix activities. Planting, weeding, harvesting, pruning. Variety equals neuroplasticity. Harvard data shows measurable improvements in as little as three weeks. For apartments or small spaces, three to five herb containers on a windowsill can provide significant benefits. Soil contact is key, not space. The overthinking gardener's hack. Don't research plant care for three hours first. Use the 10 minute rule. If you're stuck deciding, just plant something. Mistakes create stronger neural pathways. Embrace the process. Your memory, focus, emotional regulation. All show improvement with regular gardening. You're not just growing plants. You're supporting new neural growth while your prefrontal cortex finally rests. In a world designed to keep your brain in constant overdrive, gardening is neurological restoration. Darwin, Jefferson, Churchill. The greatest minds understood this. Your intelligent brain doesn't need more stimulation. It needs the right kind of restoration. The longest living people on earth don't biohack. They don't track macros. They spend 20 minutes daily with their hands in soil. Your exhausted brain already knows what it needs. It's time to listen. Start this week. 20 minutes. Your brain will thank you.